Today, I'm gonna to be taking a look at a few new mice from Glorious, the Model O2 Pro and then the Model D2 Pro. Can one of these lightweight mice become my new favorite? Let's take a look at them in a bit more detail and find out. Hi guys, I'm Matt and welcome to Kit Guru. Now, these new mice from Glorious come in two distinct varieties. The symmetrical Model O2 Pro, which is the ones on my right, your left, and then the more ergonomic Model D2 Pro. And what's more, each version comes in both a 1000 Hertz model and then a faster version, which polls at 4000 Hertz when connected wirelessly, and then up to 8000 Hertz when connected with a cable, hence why you see four different mice on the desk in front of me. The price on each of these is 100 quid for the 1000 Hertz model and then 120 quid for the 4K slash 8K models. Let's start things off then by taking a look at the design and more importantly, the shape of the two different models. As I mentioned a second ago, the Model O2 Pro has a symmetrical shape. It suits my palm grip quite well and it feels relatively comfortable for long gaming sessions. In contrast, the Model D2 Pro has a more ergonomic shape, which feels more natural to me. It feels like it was made to fit in my hand more than the Model O. I prefer the shape of the Model D, to be honest. After all, our hands aren't symmetrical. The Model O has a much more aggressive design overall when compared to the Model D. The lines on the Model O are sharper and the angles are tighter, whereas the Model D is just curvier around the edges. As for coatings, both have a textured matte black finish, which is nice and grippy, and it doesn't pick up fingerprints very easily at all. Both models feature six buttons. You've got the standard left click, right click, side buttons, mouse wheel, and then on top of each, there's a DPI switch, all of which can be remapped in the software that's used to configure the mice, Glorious Core. I'm gonna go into that in more detail later in the video. And then they've all also got an on off switch on the bottom for turning them off so you don't waste battery and stuff like that. More on the battery later as well. Both models also come with 100% PTFE feet and they both feel great on my pad. I've recently changed to a Steel Series QCK pad, which is a pretty slow mouse pad overall. And these new Glorious mice feel good on it. They glide smoothly and the pad gives a bit of stopping power to help counteract the fact that I did have to bump up the DPI to saturate the polling rate on the 4K and 8K versions when using them at a higher polling rate just for my testing. As for weight, no matter the version, they're all pretty lightweight. Opting for the faster polling rate version of either the Model O2 Pro or the Model D2 Pro adds a couple of grams overall. The Model O2 Pro is 57 grams, and then the Model O2 Pro 4K slash 8K version is 59 grams. And then similarly, the Model D2 Pro is 60 grams, and then the Model D2 Pro 4K slash 8K version is 62 grams. The Model O2 Pro, the 1000 Hertz version weighing in at just 57 grams is pretty remarkable. It's very, very lightweight and it's hardly noticeable when you hold it and when you grip it and stuff like that. That being said, the others aren't exactly bulky by any means and the difference in weight between them is minor. They all feel great to use if you like a lightweight mouse that is. Moving on to talk about the build quality then, an area which I always take a close look at, especially with lightweight products, as ditching materials in the pursuit of a lighter build can sometimes mean the quality takes a little bit of a hit. Overall, the build quality is okay. Both models feel relatively rigid for the most part, although they do flex a tiny bit when you give them a squeeze. The left click and right click buttons have a little bit of pre-travel before the switches actuate. It's nothing major, it's about on par with the buttons found on the Razer Deathadder V3 Pro, which is probably my favorite mouse that I've reviewed and that I use at the moment, to be honest. But then it is a way off the buttons on the Endgame Gear XM2WE, a mouse which I also reviewed a while ago. Those switches and buttons on that mouse feel a bit better than the ones found here. Side buttons are good all around. None of them feel mushy and they all have a satisfying and a tactile feeling click. As are the mouse wheels on all four of the mice that I've got here, they all feel solid. They don't have much side-to-side -side movement or play. Scrolling has well-defined steps and the clicks, just like the side buttons, feel satisfying to press. Thank you. 
So to quickly summarize before I talk about the sensors and the performance, which is the main thing with these mouse, the main features, I suppose, the Model O2 Pro and the Model D2 Pro only differ in their shape and then in a couple of grams of weight. It's about choosing which shape you prefer if you were to pick one up, that and then choosing if you want to go down the route of higher polling rates and the pros and cons that come with that. The similarities continue when we begin to look at the switches and the sensors for the Model O and the Model D2 Pro mice. Both models contain Glorious's Banff 2.0 sensor, which is capable of up to 26,000 DPI. It's got 650 IPS speed and can handle up to 50 Gs of acceleration. Both models also contain Glorious's optical switches, which are rated for up to 100 million clicks. Now, I didn't have the time to click these buttons 100 million times, so I guess we're going to have to take their word for it. Both models also have motion sync, which can be turned on and off in the settings, and that will synchronize polling events, USB polling events, with mouse polling data, kind of like G-Sync for your mouse. In contrast to G-Sync, though, although this sounds useful in the real world, to me personally with motion sync, I can't really tell a difference with it on or off. The key differences in the performance specs come into play when you opt for either model in the 4K slash 8K Hertz polling option as opposed to the 1000 Hertz variants. Being able to test and game with a mouse that is exactly the same shape really helped me focus in on whether the higher polling rate actually feels better when gaming. I've played a fair amount of Modern Warfare 3 and a lot more Escape from Tarkov with these mice and they've felt great 99% of the time. I've had a few instances of the sensor spinning out on the Model D Pro, the 4K, 8K version. My mouse pad's always been clean and I've checked the sensor for dust and nothing seems out of place. It's not something that's happened regularly and it's only happened a handful of times in about a month of testing, but it has happened so I had to mention it. I didn't catch it on camera though, unfortunately. Coming back to talk about the polling rate though, when using my preferred shape, the Model D, I'll say that while it does feel a bit smoother when playing with the mouse at 4K polling wirelessly, it doesn't make enough of a difference that it would make me choose a mouse based solely on the polling rate. The shape matters more for comfort and just for performance. If the shape's off, you just can't hold the thing properly. There is a slightly noticeable increase in the feeling of responsiveness when using 4K and above though. It doesn't come for free though. The battery life will take a hit when you increase how fast the mouse is pinging its signal to your PC. As for the 8K polling option, which is available only when using the cable, I have to say that on paper, having a higher polling rate is only ever going to be a good thing. It re you read about what the benefits are and you think that's going to be a good thing. In real life, I think 8K is still a bit of a gimmick and a marketing strategy by mouse manufacturers. To take full advantage of this level of polling rate, you're going to need to do a few things. First is you're going to need to have a 240 hertz plus monitor. My main gaming monitor is 165 hertz. Second, you're going to need to increase the DPI of the mouse so that the sensor is sending enough information to saturate the report rate of the sensor. This goes for 4K as well as 8K. If the mouse isn't sending enough tracking information for the polling rate to send it often enough, then it's kind of wasted. When I first started looking at these mice, I was gaming on 1600 DPI, which isn't low by any stretch of the imagination. I adjusted my DPI up to 3200 and I've halved my settings in the games that I was playing. That's what I've had to do to try and saturate that polling rate. And third, your PC needs to be able to handle high polling rates. Glorious list the requirement for 8K as being at least a 9th gen i7 processor or AMD equivalent or, or higher than that. Then there's lots of things that can interfere with the polling rate. Stuff like PC optimization, wireless interference, countless settings related to USB power and Windows HPET or that's the high, pre high precision event timer. The more you look into it, the more the list of stuff that can have an effect on polling rate goes on and on and on. Overall, shape is the number one factor. If a mouse is comfortable, that's, num that's the top priority for me. Polling rates and stuff like that is a nice to have feature after the shape.
Battery life overall on both the Model O2 Pro and Model D2 Pro has been great and it's impressed me. Glorious state up to 80 hours when polling at 1000 Hz on their website and that's roughly what I've been getting. As I mentioned earlier, bumping up the polling rate enters you into a kind of trade-off with this figure though. The higher you push up the sensor setting in the software, the faster the mice will drain their batteries. That's just the nature of the sensors having to work a bit harder. If you drive your car faster or more aggressively, it uses more fuel. It's the same with a mouse. If you push it harder and it has to report data more often, it's going to drain the battery quicker. That being said though, turning the polling rate up hasn't ever made me sit back and think the battery life is shocking on these mice at all. The batteries on these mice have been good enough and have impressed me no matter how I've used them. And I've mostly used the Model D2 Pro at 4K on wireless. And that battery life being so good, I suppose is partly down to having the USB cable so close to hand when the time to charge has come. All of the mice come with a two meter braided USB A to C cable in the box, along with wireless receivers, which can be placed on the end of these cables using an included adapter, allowing you to place them as close as possible to the mice and helping to provide a more consistent wireless experience. Apart from that sensor spinning out, I've not had any issues with the wireless performance. It's always connected, it's always woke up from standby quickly. I've never had to wait or click the mouse or anything like that. Also included in the boxes are some stickers. And then strangely, with the Model D, there are some spare skates in each of the boxes. But then with the Model O, there isn't any skates in either of the boxes. I'm not sure if that's because these are early models or whether that's just by design, but I just found that a bit strange. I really like to see the spare skates in the Model D boxes though, because that's just something where being a reviewer, I take the mouse apart and then I'm left without skates. So if I want to use it in a video in the future, I have to use dots or buy new skates or whatever. So seeing a spare set included is something I wish more brands would do. Lastly, I'm going to go through the software that's used to configure these mice. It's called Glorious Core. And if you don't want to use it, each of the mice has three onboard profiles, which you don't need to keep the software running. You can set up the mouse once, save to the onboard memory, and then uninstall the software if you want to, which I know a lot of you don't like running software. Overall, I find the software good. The layout's simple. It's kind of easy to use. The key binding tab allows for remapping and or disabling of every single button. And then the performance tab provides adjustments for lift off distance, debounce time, which can be either simple or advanced for a more granular control over the debounce of the optical switches. And then motion sync and lastly, polling rate, which can be either synced for wired and wireless modes or separated. Useful for saving battery life. You could run 1K polling wirelessly for everyday stuff and then have a higher polling rate when gaming, for example. You've just got to remember to plug the mouse in every time you want to switch to the higher polling rate. Overall, Glorious Core is decent and I quite like it. I don't mind the piece of software. It looks nice. It works well. It's quite simple to use. In conclusion then, overall, I think these mice are good. Particularly the Model D, the shape really suits me well. I really like the shape and the design of this mouse and I found it very comfortable to use. The two distinct shapes are really the deciding factor between these two mice. While the higher polling rates and motion sync are both like nice to have features, as I said, again, I wouldn't choose a mouse, any mouse that is, not just these mice, based on those features alone. 8K polling is such an edge case feature that has so many hoops to jump through that it just doesn't bother me. It's not something that I feel gives me an edge in games and it's not for something that excites me and that's game changing. It's not something I feel like I need, like a high refresh rate monitor, for example. It doesn't feel like that, like it makes a big difference. Build quality on both models is okay, as I mentioned earlier. There's a tiny bit of flex to the bodies of the mice and the pre-travel distance on the left and the right click buttons could be a bit better. Battery life is decent, even when using the mouse at 4K wirelessly. The weight or lack of weight on both models is really nice, if you like a lightweight mouse, that is. Pricing is about on par with the market, maybe slightly on the higher end. Again, it's 100 quid for one of the 1000 Hertz models and 120 quid for one of the 4K slash 8K versions. The Corsair M75 Air that I reviewed recently is 100 quid, and that's got 2K polling for a quick comparison. Overall, I like them. I'm not 
blown away, but I'm pleased with what Glorious are offering with the Model O2 Pro and the Model D2 Pro. If I had to choose one of them to use as my daily, it would be the Model D2 Pro, and I'd run it at 2000 Hertz polling wirelessly to get the most battery, because remember, shape is king. Just choose the mouse that feels the best to you. Anyway, guys, that's the end of the video. I hope you enjoyed it. Please leave a like down below if you did. Don't forget to subscribe to KitGuru to keep up with the latest PC gaming news and reviews. If you go down to the video's description, you'll find links to our Patreon page, our Discord server, our website. I almost forgot this. I've said this so many times and I'm forgetting it. And then just below the video, you'll find links to our merch, like this t-shirt that I'm wearing now. Anyway, guys, I've been Matt. These have been the new Model O and D2 Pro mice from Glorious. I will speak to you in the next one. Look after yourselves. See you later.